subscribe. When you can't say a word, just subscribe. Sing a song. When you cannot be heard, just subscribe. Read your Bible. When you're happy or sad, just subscribe to Jesus every day. Dear God, thank you for bringing us to yet another subscribe episode. Thank you for being with the participants. Bless their mommies, their daddies. Be with our viewers. Help them. Keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, we will take a slight pause from our usual schedule. We will now showcase all our talents and abilities we have. There's a voice that cries out in the silence Searching for a heart that will love him Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all And there's a God that walks over the earth He's searching for a heart that is desperate Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all. And he says, Love me, love me with your whole heart. I want it all today. Serve me, serve me with your life and now. He wants it all today. Bow down, let go of your idols. He wants it all today. over the earth He's searching for a heart that is desperate Longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all He wants it all And he says Love me Love me with your whole heart He wants it all today Serve me Serve me special welcome to all of you. Today, our discussion will be a little different. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Join us now as Secrets Reveal presents Answers to Life's Difficult Questions. Welcome back. Today, we will look at some common questions that people ask. Let's get started. Who was Cain's wife? So many people who cannot accept the Bible as reliable, they wonder, well, who was Cain's wife? 
The only mention of Cain's wife in the Bible is in Genesis 4.17. Okay. Where the Bible says, let's read it together. And, and Cain, Cain knew his, his wife, wife, and she conceived, and, and bore Enoch, Enoch and, and he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. So, the Bible does say that Adam and Eve had more children besides Cain and Abel. And many okay. people don't know this. Many people believe that, okay, Adam and Eve had two sons. Yes. And one killed the other. Yes. But we also know that after Abel died, they also had another son named Seth. Yes. So, here, let's read Genesis 5, 4, and we'll see what the Bible says. After he begot Seth, the Bible says, the days of Adam were 800 years, and he had sons and daughters. Both. So, no doubt, it was one of these daughters that Cain took for a wife. Now, some people say, hold on, wait a minute, that's not right. Yes. Because you cannot take your sister for a wife. For a wife. Now, bear in mind that the custom of brothers marrying sisters was common as late as the time of Abraham. Interesting. Yes. The earth had to be populated. And there was no other way for the earth to be populated than for Adam's children to intermarry at force. Okay. So that when the earth would become more populated, there would be no need now for relatives to marry. Yes. Let's read Genesis 20, 12, where it is speaking about Abraham and Sarah. The Bible says, But indeed she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. Mm -hmm. So, here we see that in that period of the world, men and women had not become diseased, they had not become deformed and mentally deficient as they are today. Yes. So they, if relatives marry, sister, brother marry, close relatives, there is a likely possibility that their children will be born with diseases. Yes. But back then, when the earth was very close to perfection, there was no sin at the time. The, or the earth, the sin, sinful earth, yes. after sin, Disease was not so prevalent as they are today. Okay. So, they, there was no, ch no challenge, physical challenge or illness for children who were born from relatives. Okay. Because of this condition, in many families, it is not recommended today for intermarriage, close intermarriage between members of the same family. When you go to Leviticus 18, 6 to 17, Moses prohibited close intermarriages between members of the same family because the world was populated then. So there was no need for you to intermarry your relative anymore. You could go and marry strangers now. So yes, um, Cain would have taken a sister or maybe a niece to be his wife. Okay. Christians say the Bible is the word of God. Wasn't it written by the white man to control everyone else? This is what many people believe. Those who want to reject the Bible, they say that. Christians do believe that the Bible is the word of God, but we don't believe that it was written by white men to control or deceive all other people groups. We don't believe that. No. Now, every book that we have available today, yes. it was written by some man yes. or woman, but man. Yes. Every single book. But the Bible is different. Now, some people may say, okay, how? How is it different? Okay. The Bible consists of 66 books. That's a lot of books. A lot of books. 66 books together. 40 different authors wrote the Bible over the course of 1,500 years, folks. Wow. On three different continents. Asia, Europe, 
Africa. The authors varied in their culture, their language, their education background. Yes. And they never knew, some of them never even met each other because they lived centuries apart. But yet, yeah. they wrote about controversial topics and they all disagree, they all agreed on every given subject. There is no contradiction, there is no disagreement, there is no discrepancy. Wow. This is amazing. Yes. You don't find this happening normally. This doesn't happen. Yes. They all agreed on every subject. They may have covered it from a different angle, but there is no contradiction. Second okay. Peter 1 21, the Bible says, For prophecy never came by the will of man. So it was not white man or whoever man sit down and said, Look, let's write a book and give it to people and tell them to, to follow it. No, that's not how it happened. Nope. The Bible says that holy men of God spoke as they were Move. moved by, by the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. Yes. So the authors coming from different backgrounds and cultures wrote what the Bible we have today. They were inspired to write. The Holy Spirit guided their thoughts and they put the messages into words so that we can know what God wants us to know. Because the Bible is for all mankind folks, not for just a group of people in a certain location, for all mankind, for you. Yes. It, is, it has been translated into many languages from the biblical languages, the original languages, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, wow. into many languages as of September 2020. The full Bible, folks, has been translated into 704 languages. Wow, and I'm sure, of languages. yes, and I'm sure it is growing from la 2020 last year to now. Yes. And Bible portions or, or stories into 1,160 other languages. So it is amazing that the Bible has such universal application. And it is for all mankind, yes. for all culture, all language, all people. Interestingly, the Bible has more, the most copies when compared with ancient literature. In the Greek language alone, there are over 5,000 copies. Wow. And the closest we have of classical literature, secular literature, folks, is just 600, just over 600 copies. So the Bible far exceeds any other book from the sheer number of copies so think of think about it these copies were circulated after its compilation so that it would be impossible for individuals to retrieve all the copies and deliberately change the words as some people conclude okay the bible is true because its predictions have all come to pass with accuracy. Yes. Now, you folks, you just have to read Daniel 2. Open your history book and then read Daniel 2 and you will see for yourself how the prophecies have been fulfilled yes. without any mistake. Babylon was overcome by Medo Portia. Yes. Then Greece overcame Medo Portia, then Rome overtook Greece. Yes. And then Rome was divided into ten nations that we have today, modern Europe. The Bible is true, folks. You can trust it. The Bible endures. Mankind has tried to destroy it for centuries yes. during the period called the Dark Ages. They burnt it, they killed those who had it. They did all sorts of things, but they could never get rid of it. It still continues to be the world's bestseller every single year. Yes. That's amazing. Very amazing. Isaiah 48, the Bible says, The grass Wither. withers, the flower, the flower fades, fades. But, but 
the word of our God stands forever. forever. That's it, folks. You can trust the Bible. It is God's inspired word. He tells us how he wants us to live through his word. Yes. It's not written by no white man no. to control everybody else. Don't fall for that trick, folks. There is much scientific evidence that endorses the authenticity and trustworthiness of the Bible. Isaiah 40, for example, 22, it says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And there was a time when scientists argued. They said that the earth was flat. Okay. And you could walk and walk, and after you reach a certain point, you will fall off. Wow. Had they read this scripture, mm. they would have seen that the earth is like a circle. It is round. It's not flat. It's not flat. So, again, science, true science, will lead, or the Bible will endorse true science. What stands out though, most for me, is that the Bible is true, that the Bible is true, is its ability to change people's lives when they study it. Yes. There are many accounts of people who were once thieves, murderers, sent to jail, and prisoners, folks, have been converted after studying the Bible. Some have become preachers wow. and are preaching the word of God today. That is the amazing quality of the Bible. It can change lives. No man, folks, no man or, or a group of individuals can just sit down and, and write a book or, or write these 66 books that has such remarkable power to change lives. That cannot happen. It's impossible. It cannot happen. It's impossible. The reality is that people don't want to obey the teachings of the Bible. That's so true. they invent all manner of excuses to discredit the authority of the Bible. Because the Bible says this thing, this way you must go, and they refuse to go that way. They want to go their own way instead of following God's name. The, the next question is, is it possible to believe in evolution and still be a Christian? Well, if being a Christian means believing that the Bible is the authentic, trustworthy word of God, as we said just now, and that Christ is our creator and savior, then the answer to that question is no. Okay. It's not possible. Folks, evolution and Christianity are not compatible. They are enemies. Yes. They go different paths. Right? Yes. The Bible clearly indicates that the work of creation was done in six literal 24-hour days, not millions and millions of years ago as evolution teaches. Evolution directly contradicts this and denies God's creative power. Evolution has nothing to do with God. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Isaiah 4, 5, 12, the Bible says, I have, I have made the earth. Yes. And created man on it. I, my hands, Stretched out, out the, the heavens, heavens and, and all, all the air hosts I have commanded. So God is clear. The Bible is clear that God created this world. Yes. It did not come out of a, a big bang. No. Psalm 33 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse 9, it says, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. This is the creator at work, yes. not evolution. No. Folks, you cannot read these texts 
You cannot read them and still believe in evolution or still be convinced that if God somehow used evolution, if you're a Christian, you cannot. If life developed gradually over millions of years, there will be no explanation, folks, for the weekly cycle. The day, the month, the year are all based on natural movements of the sun, the moon, and the earth. Yes. So, again, that's it. Clear. And the seven-day week has its origin at creation. Yes. We have a week of seven days, don't we? Yes. Yes. When God made the earth and he created everything in six days. And he did something even more. What was that? He rested, he rested on the seventh day. On the seventh day. That is the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. And it's based on the creation week. When God created this world in six days, and then he rested on the seventh day. And he blessed it. Yes. He, he blessed bless it. it. Evolution does not allow for a Sabbath that celebrates a creator, the God who created our world in one week. With evolution, there is no such thing as a Sabbath. Yes. Creation is the basis for the equality of all humans. When we are, God created all of us equal. You see, the theory of evolution, progressive evolution, which says, okay, we evolve from lower life forms to humans, and they use that as the, the basis for considering some human races inferior and others superior. So they say because some races would have advanced further up the evolutionary scale than others. That's not true, folks. Don't be fooled by this idea. America's founding father said that all men are created equal. That's true. Equal. So there is no justification to enslave one set of people or oppress them and say that they are lower than you. No, that's not what the Bible teaches folks. All humans are equal in God's sight. Yes. All are children of God. Yes. All have the same origin. We can trace our origin right back to our first parents. Adam and Eve. That's right. So those who believe in evolution, they have reason to, to believe that some races are more highly developed than others. Don't fall for this trick, folks. If you believe in evolution, Listen to this carefully. If you believe in evolution, you may be a Christian, but you still believe in evolution. If you do, it means there is no such thing as sin. Yes. And the death of Jesus is, is unnecessary. unnecessary. Yes. You cannot have Jesus die for the world of sin when you believe in evolution. So creation and evolution are opposed to each other. You cannot put them together. Yes. If Jesus is God, why did he say the Father was greater than he? And who did he pray to? Some people are confused because Jesus said that the Father was greater than him. Yes. I know there is one group that strongly holds out that Jesus is not God because the Father is greater than him. He is, they, for them, he is some lesser God. Okay. Now, here Jesus is not saying that he was not God. Instead, it was because Jesus was in a lower position, he was not a man, yes. that he was in a low position in terms of rank than God the Father. Hebrews 2.9 says that Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. So he became man. Alright? Yes. Now, if Jesus is man now, and he was God all the time, he has two natures now. 
when he became incarnate, he took up human nature. So he has a divine nature and a human nature. As God, he couldn't die. No. So he had to become a man to die to save us. Yes. To die on the cross of Calvary. Jesus was not denying here that he was not God. He was merely acknowledging the fact that he was also a man. He wasn't saying that I'm not God or I'm not the greatest, I'm not great. But he was saying that I am man now and I'm depending on my father. In that sense, God the father was greater than him. But as a man, he was still God. He was in a lesser position now than the father because he had added to himself human nature and he was made like us yes born to a woman except in a miraculous way by a virgin so he became a man so that he could die for us in his human nature he had to pray to the father he had to pray for strength for faith just like we have to yes he had to do that so there's no contradiction that Jesus was God, but yet he prayed to God the Father. And in fact, the Bible, the God of the Bible is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three individuals make up God. We don't try to explain it, we just accept it by faith. Some people argue that God cannot be a man, that Jesus cannot be God's uh, son because it doesn't make sense. God cannot have a son. Now folks, listen. We, in our limited, narrow understanding, cannot understand who God is. And God doesn't have to make sense to us. Yes. He doesn't. He doesn't have to be logical to us. You and I are in no position to determine what God could or could not be. We leave that up to God. And what he has revealed to us, we accept by faith. Yes. What he choose to keep to himself the secrets yes. is his choice yes, so and he decides choice. he decides what he's going to reveal to us but what he has revealed is good enough for us yes it's good enough for us now why christians preach jesus and want people to leave their religious convictions and accept him don't all religions lead to God after all? No, they don't lead to God after all. Oh. It's true that Christians preach the gospel of Jesus, that he came and died for our sins so that we can be saved. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Yes. That Jesus Christ came and died for human race, every person, okay. so that we can be saved, so that we don't have to perish. John 3 16. Yes. Right? Now, the, we go a step further. And why we preach Jesus and, and we want people from all religious backgrounds, non, non Christian religions, yes. to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior is because we believe that salvation can be attained only through Jesus Christ. We believe that he alone lived a perfect life and died in our place. Yes. That he alone qualifies folks to be our savior. Acts 4.12, this is Peter speaking. Peter says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven, heaven given, given among men, men by which we must be saved. Yes, and Jesus himself said somewhere else that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And John 10, 9, he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So Jesus is reiterating the fact that only through him is salvation possible. Yes. No other. No other. When we call people to accept Jesus, we are giving them their best chance to be saved through Jesus Christ. Yes. There is no other person who qualifies, no other religious leader. Now, 
the plural way of looking at it is, as was, is, is known or many people believe all religions are equal. Okay. That's what they say. Whichever you choose, it will lead you to the true God. Folks, this is not true. So, they, they say, if you are born in a home that subscribes to a particular religion, then by all means, you should never change. This, folks, is far from the truth. Far. Common sense tells us that everybody cannot be right when there are differences in their belief system. One has to be right. There has to be one way. And that way is only through Jesus Christ. Yes. Through Him, we are saved. Yes. Not another. And this is not boasting in any way, you know. Yes. This is yes. just saying what is the truth. We say it in love. And we call people to accept Jesus in love. Yes. And folks, there are many. Many people are leaving their religion in which they were born. And they're hearing the truth about Jesus, about salvation. They're hearing the gospel. And they're accepting Jesus all over the world in many countries. So if you are one of them, you can come forward and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior as well. Yes. Now, if we are to love each other, why did Jesus say that we have to hate our family if we want to follow him in Luke chapter 14, verse 26? Okay, uh, let's read Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. So, this is kind of strong words from Jesus. Yes. That you sure. have to hate or your father, family. hate your, fa your family. Now, is this a contradiction? Because we are told that we ought to love one another. Yes. On, on one side. So now, it seems as though we are going all the way to hate. Yes. No, it's not a contradiction. We have to understand what the text is saying in its context. And sometimes we have to compare other scriptures to get a better understanding. Jesus is simply saying that we must not love anyone more than him. Right? Okay. He must be first and foremost. Yes. To hate in this context simply means to love less. So, God is the one who should be forced in our lives. Yes. You understand? He should be forced. And in a parallel text, in Matthew 10, 37, the Bible says, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So, what Jesus is saying, we should not love our fellow men more than him. Yes. Should not love more him, them more than him. Right. So that is what it means to hate. It's not hate as in, I will hate somebody, I want to kill them. Yes. That's not what it That's means. It is, simply means to love less. What Jesus wants is, we must love him supremely. Yes. Force. Give him our, all our devotion. 100%. Yes. Jesus wants our total commitment, our total devotion. Nothing or no one should come into the way. Yes. So, loving Jesus supremely means we obey whatever he says in his word, even if it is not the popular thing to do. You should not place any man in front of Jesus, whether it's a family, family, family member, member, relative, friend, work associate, whoever, that person or persons should not be put in front of Jesus. Yes. That is what the text really is all about. Now, we have to bring our session today to a close. 
If you have a question, we will try to answer it from the Bible. Please send it in the comments or inbox. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this discussion today. Thank you that we get to learn more about you from the Bible. Help the viewers who are watching to draw close to you. Have a relationship with you and do whatever you see. Please bless us at this time. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for viewing. We are going to see you right here next time. God bless you. See you soon.
now time to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for wanting to talk to me each day. I'll look for your words in my Bible, and when I hear a story about you at church or in school, I want to be your friend forever. Amen.